rolling. Go ahead. Well, Scott, in obviously progress. the uh, the highlight of that card, which was pretty good top to bottom, the main event, uh, the way things ended. Can you just give me your perspective uh, on that knockout by Sergio Pettis? Wow, it was spectacular. You know, when the, um, you see a quality matchup like that, and they were, you know, champ versus champ. Horiguchi hasn't fought. This is his big comeback fight, and uh, he looked great for three rounds. And you know, Pettis is a knockout guy. You got to be careful for the whole fight, and you guys saw what happened. So. Congratulations to the, the champ, and uh, we'll move forward uh, into the tournament from here. Talk to me about the tournament. Obviously, couldn't, the announcement couldn't have come at a better time. Um, this is a good way to, to kind of, you know, pre preset the table, so to speak. Uh, how excited are you to, to proceed with the Bantamweight tournament, and why did you choose Bantamweight as the uh, the next weight class? You know, honestly, this is a division we could we could probably do a eight, a sixteen man tournament easily. And uh, when you look at the top, you know, eight guys, they're just all killers and. And, and we said, look, we, this has to be the division. This is one of the best, this is probably one of the best divisions we have. And I think in that crop, you probably have, you know, to me, the, whoever wins this tournament is going to be the best man away in the world. And, uh, you know, when, when it was time to pick the division, I circled up back with my guys and, and they said, look, this is, this is what we should do. And we went with it. And I know the matchups haven't been decided yet. Do you think that will be something you guys will pair based off the rankings? Do you think it will be like kind of a, a randomizer or we've seen in the past fighters get to kind of pick and, and that sort of thing? How, how do you determine the matchmaking for this one? The, uh, the time we did the fighters draw was when we had a 16-man tournament. And if we decided to go a 16-man tournament again, we would probably do the same thing. Um, but to me, we're going to sit down. It's not going to just be necessarily one versus eight, two versus seven. It's going to be, I think, you know, something that my myself and my matchmakers and the fight team are going to sit down and we're going to pick the best matchups style-wise that we feel uh, that we can put together. And that's how uh, the tournament will be uh, chosen. Last one for me. Any sort of timeline on, on when we could expect this to begin? I know right now there's uh, no announced dates for Bellator yeah. in 2022. I guess in general, when should we see you back? When, when can we see the tournament start? Yeah, I mean, I think we'll have an announcement probably, you know, in another week or so. But we, we definitely will be coming back in January at some point. Uh, we got some big fights ahead. I think that uh, if you look at the fights we have to finish the light heavyweight tournament, that's going to be a, a big fight between uh, Corey Anderson and uh, Vadim Nemkov. And um, when I look at you know the the beginning of this tournament, will be another great fight sometime in the first quarter. Uh, Bader versus, versus Moldowski. I think that unification bout needs to happen. So we got a lot of great fights. I think MVP versus Amosov will happen in the first quarter or early second quarter. Uh, so, you know, it's uh, a good lineup, and we'll have something to announce next week. As far as the tournament, honestly, I think it's going to start sometime in March. You know, give uh, Horn Gucci, we'll check in on him uh, maybe tonight, and then maybe tomorrow we'll have uh, some update. But, you know, if he's uh, okay and he's going to rest a little bit, I think by March he'll be fine and we'll be ready to go. Great. Thanks. Scott, congratulations on an incredible night. Uh, going back to the Grand Prix, in the past you've had – times where you put all the fights on one or two nights back to back sometimes you've done you know one fight in january one fight in february any idea how like that's going to go all in one night or separate nights i mean my goal really uh is to work it out with showtime to see if we get an additional time slot and uh do it all in one night i think that tournament would be amazing to have all four fights on the same night line up all those guys eight fighters and then let's get it on obviously the way Horiguchi was knocked out it's probably going to be out for a while. Um, is that, is that going to push the whole tournament back? Or you going to go with the... I mean, I'm gonna, we're going to talk to the doctors and, and see what happens. But, you know, if he's, uh, you know, under suspension up to a certain point, can't have contact, and then we'll factor that in. But you saw the level of fighter that this guy is. I mean, he's unbelievable. And uh, he he basically, to me, was controlling the whole fight, the whole pace. And then he got caught. And that's, you know, that happens in MMA. And that's the beauty of MMA. MMA is fast, it's explosive. It's, it's raw, it's, it's, this is the reason why it's so popular. And uh, you know, what he did was spectacular and what Horiguchi was doing up to that point to me was, was amazing, it was brilliant. And he got caught and that's what happens. Uh, last question about the Grand Prix. How about an ideal location? Is there a place you're like, we wanna hold it here? You know, the location hasn't been determined. And um, you know, there was a thought if COVID wasn't here that we were gonna throw maybe the opening round in Japan. But uh, that would have been amazing, right? So, so we would work with Ryzen and, um, and put it in Tokyo, either Saitama Super Arena or the Tokyo Dome. Uh, but COVID's, uh, I think, becoming a thing over there again. They shut the whole country down. 
So uh, I think we're going to re regroup and put it somewhere in the States, maybe in the Bay Area, maybe in L.A., uh, or it could be here. So, you know, it's undetermined at this point. Uh, my last question. I know you've talked about her in the past, but I can bring it up. It's been a long time since we've seen the free agent like Kayla Harrison, where it seems like every organization is fighting over. I know you said that talks are going well. Any update? I mean, are you still really pursuing? Are you really still in the mix? What's... Yeah, I mean, I think we're uh, talking to her manager uh, next week, so we'll keep you updated. I mean, uh, it's it's going to be interesting where she hands up, and uh, we'll have her hand in there. Hey, Scott, listen, congratulations. You know, great cap off to a 2021, and, you know, the journey at uh, Mohegan Sun. Well, you know, to walk us through your thoughts about you, uh, you know, watching the main event, watching uh, Pettis fight through the adversity, and... What type of statement uh, Pettis uh, made with this uh, victory right before the Grand Prix? You know, a guy like Pettis has a great, such a great, you know, martial arts background. Has a family that has done this for 20 years, and you know, it's it's to see him just dig deep and persevere because really, there's a point where he could have just kind of gave up, right? But there's a reason why he's a champ, right? And and even though he was getting beat, he was getting out wrestled, he was getting out punched, out kicked. I mean, you know. I, I think he knew in his mind, if I could just catch this guy, I could stop this fight. So he knew he always had the power, and, and you saw the power, you saw what happened. So it's, uh, you know, great congratulations to him. He did what he had to do to win. Uh, final question for me, you know, 2022 is going to be an explosive year for Bellator. Uh, you know, while you got any, since it's the season of giving, you know, the Christmas season, you got any gifts, uh, any presents that you want for next year? Well, you're talking about fights or? <laughs> No, you know what? It's you know. Listen, every every day, you know, when I when I, I mean, in this sport, we're lucky to do what we do. It's just like you know, it's an industry, and uh, you know, I've been in the martial arts fight business, you know, Jesus, thirty years, thirty five years plus, and uh, I feel it's a blessing to be in, in this business and doing what we do. And and I, I never feel like I really have to work a day. Really, uh, when I wake up, I just enjoy what I do. I love the guys I work with. I love the fighters I work with. And we have a great, great community, a great bond, and a great, you know, camaraderie in the office there. So, to me, it's been a, it's been a great journey. So, you know, I was texting everybody today. Said, hey, we did a lot of great work this year. I felt like starting from the fight in Los Angeles with AJ McKee fighting Pitbull, because as you guys know, we did, we were here for almost a year, right? We we're here for a year without any audience, and so it's a different feeling, and it just felt different. And when we when we got to LA, and we you know had a great crowd with that fight in Los Angeles with AJ Pitbull. And then we went to San Jose and Phoenix and London and Dublin was amazing and Moscow was unbelievable. I mean, I just feel like we're on a roll right now and this is another, you know, continuation of, of that process is that, you know, we're, we're ending the, the fights on such a great note in 2021. Uh, and I, I was texting my staff saying, hey, congratulations. You know, we're back up and running and, and this feels right, everything feels good. And let's just keep on rocking and rolling and doing what we do. Hey Scott, uh, speaking of performance, oh, over here. Speaking of performances, uh, Spike Carlisle uh, taking that fight on short notice and the comeback mm -hmm. uh, win that he had. I, it sounded like he has. He, this was the only fight that he was offered. Is it? If that's true, is it possible that we'll see him back in the future? Based yeah, on what absolutely. He did today? He's 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 the the he, he's a guy that I think he's going to be a fan favorite. And when, when I, you know, I was watching his fight actually on my phone. It's like. You know, he, he had a little gas tank, you know, issue, but he took the fight on short notice. So I, I thank him. And I think most of our deals we do with people that come in, it's a, uh, it, we have some options on, on the fights. We'll definitely extend them. And if not, we'll try to sign them and get them for some more fights because it was really entertaining. And he, he, he really showed his character in that fight. I'm also curious to know as well, uh, 2022, uh, any news that you can say about what uh, Fedor has planned mm. or what you might be planning to do? Yeah, so we have Fedor's fight coming up in the summer. Uh, in, in Moscow, um, uh, I'm really excited because you know, to me, honestly, he's the greatest heavyweight fighter of all time. And I know some people have their opinions, whatever, but they just forgot what what he did in the first half of his career, right? And if you add that up with the second half of his career, you know, Tim Tim Johnson is no joke. And and I and I remember sitting there going, all right, whoever gets to the chin first is going to win this fight. And it, Tim's a dangerous fighter. And if he hit Fedor, I don't know, but Fedor got there through. Threw a three punch combination on Tim, like he was 25 years old. It was it was unbelievable, and, and 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 man, this guy is just really special. And we're gonna do something really big for him in Moscow, probably in July at some point. And uh, and uh, it'll be the ending. It'll be the the end of an era, you know, as far as 
you know, Fedor. So uh, I'm, I'm excited about that. That's going to be uh, a great event. All right, thanks for the time, Scott. Thank you.